Chris Sotro here today from Truck 22. We're gonna go over our new Genesis extrication tools with you. Purchase of the new extrication tools went through a very competitive bid process. There was a panel of five members that went through an introduction as well as an interview process with each of the manufacturers. After the manufacturers were narrowed down to three, we brought them out and we put them through a field trial out here at headquarters. Each of the manufacturers brought out their equipment for us to use. We had three vehicles, all of the same types for all three manufacturers, so a total of nine vehicles with 15 people involved from throughout the department and different ranks to go ahead and test the tools and put them through the paces to see which manufacturer was gonna work the best for us. Each one of those evaluators went through and completed a thorough written evaluation for the tools, which was scored and highly weighted throughout the process. Members from the field basically had the chance to come out and test the tools and tell the department what we wanted to use. We went ahead and selected the Genesis extrication equipment. As a part of our standard complement, we're gonna have our Mach 3 Outlaw power unit, our C365 cutters, our S53 spreaders, a three-stage 19 to 52 inch ram and then also a two stage 16 to 31 inch ram along with three single line 32 foot hoses. This is the Mach 3 Outlaw power unit. It features a 6.5 horsepower four stroke Honda motor made it up with a 1.5 gallon hydraulic reservoir. The motor itself is going to be very similar to what we're already used to. We have our on-off switch here on the left side. We have our fuel shut off here on the bottom, our choke, and then our throttle for the motor. Over here, looking onto the back side, if you look at the top of the reservoir, you'll have your hydraulic fill. We have our Genesis OSC one-step couplings, very similar to the streamlined couplings that we currently have on the Hearst equipment. The gasoline fill is here on the, located here on the top. It is a one gallon tank, it takes straight gas. The Mach 3 Outlaw can function for approximately three to four hours depending on the load that's placed on the motor itself. After each use, we want to continue to shut off the fuel just as we do now with our current Hearst equipment. The hydraulic reservoir itself is 1.5 gallons. It utilizes standard mineral oil provided by Genesis. The fill here is located here on the top and our sight glass is going to be over here onto the right side. Just to go over the starting procedure here on the Mach 3 Outlaw. Very similar, if not the exact same, as our current units. We keep our units in the on position on the truck company, so we have the on switch in the on position. Okay, we have our choke already on. We need to make sure that we turn our fuel on, and then we have our throttle in the uh, idle position. Once we've done those, we can go ahead and pull the pull cord. Fire up the unit, go to our half choke, let it warm up, and then take the choke completely off. At this point, the power unit is at idle. I can now take my throttle and increase my RPM to give me the appropriate PSI needed. When we go through a shutdown procedure, we're gonna throttle down, and then we can come over here and turn it into the off position. Now, to return the unit back to the uh, truck, I'll go ahead and put it back in on. I'll set it to choke in case we get another call later, and I'll turn my fuel off, and I'm ready to go next time. The Mach 3 Outlaw is a Simo pump system. It has two separate pumping circuits that allow you to use two tools simultaneously. In addition, it has a overdrive function which will allow you to switch the power from both circuits to one single circuit, increasing the momentum on that tool. Along with the two separate pumping circuits, you'll have two valves located here on the top. In the uh, straightforward direction, it's gonna be in the neutral position. If I'd like to hook up a tool to this left side, when I take that lever and move it to that side, it provides power to that circuit. Also, if I have a tool on the opposite side and I move the lever to the outside, it's gonna provide power to that tool as well. Now, with the overdrive feature, say I have a set of spreaders here on this left side and I wanna to go to the overdrive function, I'll take both levers and go to the left tool. If I wanna switch and go overdrive to the opposite tool, and I'll go back to neutral, 
and then to the right side. For this portion, we're going to demonstrate the overdrive function of this power unit. We're utilizing both S53 spreaders. The spreader on the left will be in the standard mode. The spreader on the right will be in the overdrive mode. As you can see, the spreader on the right works at almost twice the speed of the standard mode on the left. One thing that we need to keep in mind about this capability is it's slightly different than our current Hearst tools. The tool's gonna work a lot faster if it's in the overdrive mode, thus the rescuer needs to anticipate the movements of that tool or any of the material that they're trying to spread. We're gonna go into overdrive mode so you can see the increased speed and how you would have to react as a rescuer. The spreader that we selected is the S53XL. This is a 44 pound tool. It's very ergonomically balanced. It has a uh, spread of 32 inches. Its lowest spread force is 11,800 foot pounds and its highest spread force is 18,200 foot pounds. As far as the controls go, we have a push button trigger. By pressing up on the concave portion at the bottom, you will activate the spread. By pushing down on the convex from the top, you will close the spreaders. Releasing activates the dead man. It will return to the neutral position and the tool will stop. The spreaders also feature two handles, which are not movable. You have your traditional top handle here, and then you have a side handle if you're to do, let's say, a dash lift, and it makes it a little bit easier to hold the tool. The spreaders also have removable tips by depressing the pin, you can go ahead and slide off the tip. You'll notice the pin stays locked into the tip itself. The tips are not reversible, so they're only used in one fashion. You place the tip back in, depress the pin, make sure it's securely in. The tips also feature sharp studs that allows with a little bit of traction on that initial spread. When you're done with the cutting operation, we want to go ahead and stow the tools to be placed back on the truck. For the spreaders, we want to go ahead and close the tips, but to ensure that we haven't put any additional pressure on that tool, we want to leave a slight gap between the tips. Next up is our C365 cutter. This is a 365,000 foot-pound maximum cutting force. That force is actually measured as the teeth are moving past each other, which is that point where you need the most force to fracture any type of ultra high strength steel. That's gonna be the biggest capability of this new cutter is that we can cut through that ultra high strength steel where we've been having trouble over the last few years with the current Hearst system. The cutters themselves have an opening distance of seven inches. With the controls on the cutters, it's gonna be opposite of the spreaders. When we want to close the tips, we're gonna depress the concave at the bottom, and then we want to open it, we're going to depress the top. One of the unique features of this tool is that the carrying handle can be rotated around the tool to help support your operation. Whether you need to flip the tool to work upside down, you can rotate it across and relock it in place. It also works well if the tool has moved into the material slightly and is going to contact another portion of the vehicle then you can go ahead and move it, or you also have that option to remove this handle and prevent from crushing it. By simply unscrewing it, taking the bracket off, now I have the tool without the handle in my way. If I need to get inside, maybe uh, cut the center of the dash, cut out those support members, I can do so without having to manipulate that handle at this point. Put the handle back on, you simply just wrap it around, place the bottom bracket on the bottom side, place the top handle into that detent, Grab onto your knob and screw it back into place. 
The cutters also feature two LED lights to light up your cutting material. By simply rotating the tip of the light, you'll turn it on. And then by rotating it back, it will turn it off. This is a lithium metal hydride battery. When you finish the operation for the cutters, same thing, you want to close them to close up that gap and protect the tips. Next up, we have our three-stage telescoping ram. This ram will move from 19 to 52 inches in length. On its three stages, it has different amounts of forces that it can apply. At the first stage, 60,000 foot-pounds. Stage two will be at 29,000 foot-pounds, and stage three will be at 10,000 foot-pounds. The rams feature the same push-button trigger as the other two tools. By depressing the concave portion of the button at the bottom, you will extend the ram out. Releasing it sets that dead man, it'll go back to the neutral position, and then depressing the convex top portion of the button will go ahead and close the ram. The tip of the ram can be adjusted to help you set it to bite into the material you're trying to push off of. This ram is a push-only ram, so we will no longer have that push-pull capability that we currently have with our Hearst equipment. The next ram is gonna be a two-stage, 16 to 31 inch. It features two stages, like I said. The first stage is going to give you 42,000 foot-pounds of force, and stage two will give you 22,000 foot-pounds of force. The controls work the exact same as the three-stage ram. The tip on the two-stage ram can be rotated. However, you can only do so while you're extending or collapsing the tool. The complement will come with three 32-foot hoses. You'll have a red, yellow, and black hose. This is a single hose, which has a high pressure line on the internal core that feeds the tool, and then it has a low pressure line at the outer core, which returns that hydraulic fluid back to the power unit. Each hose features the Genesis OSC, or one-step coupling. It has a male and female coupling just as the current streamlined couplings that we use with the Hearst equipment. To connect the hose to your power unit, you're simply gonna take your male connection, place it into the power unit, and then a counterclockwise rotation will lock it into place. To remove it, you do not have to dump the valves on the tool. You can be in the pressure mode or the neutral mode to go ahead and disconnect the tool without any hydraulic fluid leaking. Once we've connected the hose to our power unit, we're gonna go ahead and extend the hose. A great feature with this particular hose and coupling is that it swivels. So we should no longer see ourselves having to uncoil these hoses on scene. By simply walking back and holding on to the coupling, the hose is going to straighten itself out without any kinks. A good method for coiling up these hoses is to use the overhand, underhand method. You're gonna start off with an overhand and then you're gonna reach forward and bring an underhand loop in. And you just alternate that until you've completely coiled the hose. Overhand and then underhand. This really helps with the hose deployment later on for that next call. Next, you'll DC the hose from the power unit. Go ahead and place your strap on it and then place it back on the truck. The maintenance on the Genesis equipment is very similar to what we currently do. After each use, we want to go ahead and wipe down to remove any debris, clean the couplings to prevent contamination of hydraulic fluid. We want to check the equipment for damage and lubricate any moving parts as needed with WD-40. Our weekly checkout should entail checking all couplings and fittings for tightness, run each tool and build pressure, check the handles and guards, and then check all fluid levels. 
Annually, we shall be changing the engine oil, change the hydraulic fluid, test the engine performance, change the spark plug, clean the air filter, lubricate moving parts, check the pressure lines and fittings, check opening and closing pressure of the tools, check the power unit's operating pressure, and check all valves. The annual servicing will be done through Genesis.